Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. Today I have something very special for you. Today I'm going to go over how you can use the left hand trick to find different trigonometric values. So when you start learning the unit circle, uh, you, you start to have to memorize certain values for like uh, the sine of pi over 6 or even the cosine of pi over 3. And if you look at the values on a unit circle, they're not exactly the nicest values that you want to try and memorize. Uh, for example, if I'm just looking at pi over 6 over here, uh, my first coordinate is the square root of 2, uh, the square root of 3 over 2, and the second coordinate is 1 half. And then a little bit later on, here I have a couple more coordinates for pi over 4. That's the square root of 2 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. So when you're, when you're faced with trying to memorize these values, you usually run into a lot of difficulties. However, if you use this uh, left hand trick, you'll see that uh, actually memorizing these turns out to be pretty simple. So let me explain this trick so that you can use it whenever you want. The idea with the left hand trick is that you're going to take your left hand and associate every finger, finger with an angle. So let me just grab my ruler here real quick so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to make a, a, a small little mark here. Now let's go ahead and make another mark here. So you want to think of this as the first coordinate for your unit circle. Your thumb then is pointing straight up, that's like your uh, 90 degrees or pi over 2, and your pinky, that's like 0 degrees. Now every finger is going to represent a different angle. So what are your major angles that you really need to take care of? Well you could start over here with pi over 6 followed by pi over 4, pi over 3, and then of course we'd finish up with pi over 2. So every finger a major angle. Now how is that going to help us figure out uh, any of our values? Well depending on what angle you are interested in you'll put that finger down and then you'll simply count the number of fingers that are left. So you're gonna have to remember this guy you want to look at the square root of the number of fingers all divided by 2. Now, you may be asking yourself, like, wait a minute, what fingers are you talking about? If I'm looking at my hand and I say put down my finger, I have four left. Is, is that what you mean? Not exactly. Um, the fingers uh, to the left or the fingers to the right of whatever you put down, that will determine your value for your coordinates and it'll determine your value for sine and cosine. So here's how you can keep them straight. So when you're looking at those coordinates, the first coordinate is for cosine and the second coordinate is for sine. So if I'm uh, putting a finger down, the ones on the left will be for cosine, and the ones for the right will be for sine. Don't worry, we'll do a bunch of different examples so you can see how this trick works. Um, it's actually pretty simple. So let's start off with something really nice, something like the cosine of pi over 3. So I'm going to take my left hand, and you'll see that I'll put down the finger for pi over 3. So here's my hand, put down the finger for pi over 3. Now cosine, I'm looking to the fingers on the left. So here are the fingers on the left. I only have one of them. So I'll be taking the square root of 1 divided by 2. Or that simply simplifies to 1 half. So the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Let's try another one. Let's try uh, sine of pi over uh, 6. So again, you want to grab your left hand, find that pi over 6 and put it down. And since we're looking for sine, look to the fingers on the right side. So the only finger I have is just my pinky. Square root of 1 divided by 2, 1 half for this value. All right, let's do another one. Uh, let's go ahead and do cosine of, let's see, what else we got? Cosine of pi over 2. That sounds good. So looking at my left hand, uh, pi over 2 would be my thumb. So I want to imagine putting my thumb down. And now I look to the fingers on the left side of it and to the right side of it. Uh, the left is what I need to use for cosine. So I have zero fingers to the, the left square root of 0 over 2, or just 0. So the more you practice this trick, the better you'll get at it, uh, and you'll be able to figure out lots of different trigonometric values. 
Let's go through even more examples, and near the end we'll get into some more difficult ones, which are not in this first quadrant. And you'll see that this trick actually still works pretty good, as long as you remember all of your other connections. Alright, let's get going. So for all of these, I'll need to look at my left hand and figure out how many fingers are to the left or to the right, depending on what value I'm looking at. So starting off with cosine, we'll grab our left hand, think about how every finger represents an angle. So pi over six is simply uh, this angle right here. Let's put it down. Looks like I have three fingers to the left and only one finger to the right. Cosine deals with fingers on the left. So I'll take the square root of three I'm going to put it over 2. And that's it. We got our value. Uh, sine of pi over 4. So again, we grab our left hand here, looking for pi over 4. So 0, pi over 6, pi over 4 is the middle one. So let's put that one down. Sine is the fingers to the right. So we want to take these two over here. Square root of 2 over 2. Very nice. Now, that, that's pretty good for sine and cosine, but what do we do for tangent? You know, that, that's not exactly one of the coordinates. For tangent, you have to remember that you're essentially taking um, your sine value, pi over 3, and you're dividing it by your cosine value of pi over 3. So, you'll use both uh, of the fingers and simply divide the result. All right, let's give this a shot. So I'm looking for pi over three, looks like uh, we need this finger, so let's put that one down. Cosine will be the square root of one over two. Sine will be the square root of three over two. So sine square root of three over two, all divided by uh, square root of one over two. And now we simply have to do, you know, just a little bit of work to simplify this. This is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. I'm canceling out the twos and I get a value of the square root of three. Not bad. So I said we'd do some more difficult examples and let's go ahead and turn our attention to those right now. These ones uh, are either not in the first quadrant or they involve some other trigonometric functions that maybe you're not sine and cosine. Uh, again, the trick here is really knowing your connections among all of your trigonometric functions so you can still find your reference angle and still use that left hand trick to find its value. All right, let's start off with the first one. Cosine of two pi over three. For this one, you really wanna start uh, about thinking what your reference angle is. So if I'm just looking at the top half of the circle, you know, between zero and pi, I can see that it's been chopped into thirds. So one third pi, two thirds pi, and the angle we're looking at is two thirds pi. So we are right there at two thirds pi, there's our angle. Uh, the reference angle then will take us all the way to the x-axis this way, so our reference angle would be pi over 3. We'll use the reference angle to get an idea of our value. So I'm curious, what is the value of cosine of pi over 3? And you want to do that for any angle that doesn't fall in the, the first quadrant. Find its reference angle, that way you can use this trick. Alright, so let's grab our hand. I'm looking for pi over 3, so it would be this one. Let's put that finger down. Uh, cosine, I'm looking at the left finger, so I'm simply dealing with 1 half. So 1 half, done. Now also, I need to remember, since I'm not in that uh, first quadrant, I need to remember the sine of this, so all students take calculus. Uh, only sine and its reciprocal are positive in the second quadrant, I'm not dealing with sine or, or its reciprocal, so I need to make my value negative. Negative one half. All right, not bad. Let's do another one of these. So to start off, I just need to figure out where this angle is. If I'm looking at negative two pi, it's like I've gone in the negative direction, but I've gone all the way around. Uh, let's see. So I'm going all the way around and then stopping at zero degrees. So really what I need to figure out is what is sine of zero. All right, let's see what we can get for that. So uh, looking at my left hand, a sine would be just this first finger here. We can put that down. Sine are the fingers to the right of it, and there are no fingers to the right. So we would say that this is zero. Zero. All right, let's try a really tricky one. This is cosecant of negative five pi over six. 
So it looks like we've taken pi and we've chopped it up into six little bits. So I'm thinking of uh, pi would be the bottom half, or negative pi would be the, like the bottom half of the circle. Chopping it into one, two, three, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six little bits. And we're going through negative five pi over six. So one, two, three, four, five. There's where my angle is. This is it right here. And my reference angle would take me all the way back to the x-axis. So we'll use a reference angle of just pi over six. One more of these things. Okay, with our reference angle then, then I, I can use that to get a little bit more information about the value that I want. So I need to figure out what is the value of cosecant of uh, pi over six. Now again, I run into a little bit of a problem. What, what exactly is cosecant? All I know how to do is find cosine and sine. Well, fortunately, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I'm looking for one divided by sine of pi over six. And when I find that value, I'll have a good sense of what I need, okay? So let's grab our left hand here. We're looking at pi over six, that's our second finger. Let's put that down. I'm looking at fingers to the right since I'm dealing with sine. So it looks like that's simply the square root of one divided by two, or we can say one half, that'll work out just fine. So one divided by one half. Uh, one divided by one half, that simplifies to just two, so that's really nice. So this is the value for cosecant of pi over six. Now again, we have to kind of stop and think, is that really what my value is? It may have a different sign since we're using the reference angle. Well, right now we're in the third quadrant and only tangent and its reciprocal, those are the ones that are positive. Uh, our angle that we're dealing with is for cosecant, so you know, it's not going to be positive. So our value will be a negative two. All right. So hopefully this trick helps you out uh, uh, memorize that unit circle as quickly as possible. Also note that you will need to know uh, a lot of other connections to make sure that you can get the full unit circle and get all of the values around it. All right. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.